many myths going around on you know what are the common triggers you know for cancers can you take us through the risk factors um, of cancer generally when it comes to these non-communicable diseases such as cancers diabetes type 2 and hypertension yeah. We classify risk factors into two. We have the modifiable risk factors that we can change yeah. and the non-modifiable. Let me start with the non-modifiable because there's nothing we can do about them. Sex, age, uh, family history, and uh, genetics. For instance, there are cancers we see more in, in women than in men, like breast cancer. Men also develop breast cancer, but it is rare. Okay? Then there are, of course, you know, there are those organ-specific cancers like you never find ovarian cancer in a woman, in a man, sorry, but you'll find it in a woman because men don't have ovaries. That one, we don't even talk about it. For age, for most cancers, the older you are, the higher the risk. Prostate cancer, for instance, as the age of the man increases, the risk increases. And we see prostate cancer more in men from age 50 going up. We rarely see it in men below 50, but we can see it. Family history, there are some cancers like breast, prostate, colon, ovary, that if what you call a first degree relative has then the risk, that means a sibling, a parent or a child has, then you as a person, your risk is higher. Yeah. It doesn't mean you will get. A risk factor is an attribute that increases your chance of getting a particular disease. It is not a cause. When it comes to the modifiable risk factors, those are the ones we normally focus our attention on because we can change them. Smoking. Smoking is a very huge risk factor for, for cancers. For so many cancers. Lung, cancers of the throat, cancers of the mouth, even cancers of even the kidney. The bladder, the urinary bladder, it has been implicated. Alcohol is another risk factor. Again, because any part of the body where alcohol touches, the lip, the throat, the mouth, the food pipe, the stomach, even the liver, because it's the one that digests alcohol, it increases the risk. And please note the words I'm saying. I'm not saying that if you take alcohol, you'll get cancer of the throat or the food pipe. It means that your risk will be higher. The more alcohol you take and the longer the duration of taking alcohol, that increases the risk. Then there's diet, okay? And diet is a very huge controversy. Nutritionists are usually best place to talk about diet. Yeah. So, but normally a diet that is rich in fruits and vegetables lowers the risk of one developing cancer, okay? Red meat has been implicated. Processed foods, such as sugars, uh, sausages, bacon, all those have been implicated when it comes to like, especially like cancer of the colon or the large intestine. Uh, being overweight, which goes together with what we call a sedentary lifestyle or lack of physical activity then your risk increases. Now remember, the more risk factors you have, the higher the chance of you developing cancer. Okay. But still, you may have none of these risk factors, especially the modifiable ones, and still That's develop right. cancer because of the, because of the non-modifiable, especially like uh, genetics, which we cannot control. What are your probably three cardinal points in terms of the prevention and also the management of cancer so that then we deal with the aspect of if you want to prevent it and when you get it, how do you effectively manage cancer? First thing I would advise anyone is, is number one, let's avoid the modifiable risk factors, yeah. you know, no smoking. Alcohol is a very uh, sensitive topic because, you know, in a social setup, that's what most people drink. And normally say that a glass of wine uh, good for is good for the heart because it lowers the, what you call, uh, the bad cholesterol and boosts the good cholesterol. However, when it comes to cancers, the more alcohol you take, the higher the risk of developing cancer. So, but remember I said, it's just we're talking about risk factors here, okay? Then eat a balanced diet. You may even visit a nutritionist to, to guide you. Avoid a sedentary lifestyle. So basically, do exercises. Probably every other day, 30 to 40 minutes a day, that would be sufficient. Whether it is brisk walking, swimming, jogging, Whatever it is, cardio, whatever it is that you enjoy, because you have to enjoy your exercise. And of course, avoid being overweight. Now, one of the best tools we have in cancers is what we call screening. Screening means you have a, a, a person, not a patient, a person who has no symptoms, has just gone to see their doctor because they want to be checked whether they may have uh, cancer that is developing. And uh, we have screening for breast cancer, cervical cancer in women, uh, colon cancer in both men and women, and prostate cancer in men and also uh, lung cancer in both sexes. A CT scan of a done at a lower dose is encouraged just to screen so that if something abnormal is detected, further tests are done. If there's no abnormality detected, and this is for all screening tests, then you may be told maybe do it depending on the cancer, on what you are screening and the tool you're using. 
every year, every two years, every three years or every five years. Thank you so much, we really appreciate. Thank you so much for joining us on Wanja's Health Diary. I hope it was an opportunity to learn more about cancer, but most importantly to go for that test. It's really important. Thank you.